And we're back with another Kyiv Post Newsy vlog. After a one-week break for the first round of the Ukrainian presidential election, we have returned to update you on the latest developments. In case you haven't been able to keep up with our coverage in print and online, here are the most important events from the Ukrainian presidential race. It's been an exciting, important, nervous, confusing, and complicated week for Ukraine. Much blood, sweat, tears, and yes, urine has been shed. On March 31st, Ukrainians across the country went to the polls to vote for one of 39 presidential candidates. Zelensky received 30.24% of the vote. Followed by Poroshenko with 15.95%. And Timoshenko took third with 13.40%. It was a giant middle finger to the political establishment, a gesture I won't be doing on camera. Amongst the biggest surprise of the vote was the strong performance by Ihr Smishko, a former security service chief who received just over 6% of the vote to take 6th place, despite spending a lot less than many of the other candidates. Polls show Smishko was popular among people over 50. His relatively brief year and a half tenure as security chief 14 years ago proved to be a boon. Voters saw him as an experienced professional, but not so experienced as to be tainted by scandal. If it falls off, it falls off. You kids nowadays don't know the first thing about voting. This candidate is too experienced. This candidate has no experience. But this candidate is just right. Additionally, Poroshenko only slightly beat Zelensky at military polling stations in the Donbass war zone. An unpleasant surprise for a candidate whose slogan was Armia Mova Viva. Army, language, faith. By and large, independent and international election observers found the vote to be free, fair, and competitive. But there were some problems. Biased and polarized media coverage, the use of administrative resources, and the problem of our social media era. People taking pictures of their ballots, probably to upload them to Instagram or Facebook. <sighs> and there was a lack of debates. Speaking of which, as the election moves on to the second round, when on April 21st the public will choose between Poroshenko and Zelensky, the whole country is talking about debates. Do Petra Poroshenko. On April 3rd, Zelensky released a video challenging Poroshenko to a debate in Kyiv's Olympijski Stadium in front of a live audience and millions of viewers at home. He also said that both candidates should take drug and alcoholism tests before the debate, likely referring to a rumor that Poroshenko is an alcoholic and attempting to disprove rumors that he himself uses drugs. In the course of several more videos and social media posts, Poroshenko accepted the challenge and attempted to portray himself as the responsible, serious candidate capable of being commander-in-chief. Thanks, Dad. Then, in a move historians will one day call really f***ing weird, Zelensky suggested that Yulia Tymoshenko should be the quote-unquote independent referee of the debate. Poroshenko responded, Be a man. Come to the stadium. I'll be waiting. A girl once sent me a Tinder message like that. Did you go? And she wasn't my type. You see what's possible through bipartisanship? In a series of videos, both Poroshenko and Zelensky have dragged the democratic tradition up onto showmanship cliff. And then what did they do? They kicked it off into the valley of the absurd. They took competing drug tests. On the morning of April 5th, in front of a gawking crowd of journalists, Poroshenko arrived at Kiev's Olympijski Stadium and gave blood, urine, and hair samples. Initially, they reported that it would only be a blood test, and the election went from great to piss poor. Get it? Get it? Because there's no, there's no urine sample? As of this recording, we're still waiting for the full results. But here's what we know now. Poroshenko is not on psychoactive drugs. 
Now I know Ukrainian politics is crazy, but I'm pretty sure it's not president on acid crazy. Meanwhile, Zelensky took a blood test at the Eurolab Medical Center in Kyiv. He said he planned to publish the results when he received them in three days. Later that day, however, he published a photograph of the results on Instagram. But there was a problem. The date was wrong. <laughs> then the Zelensky campaign quickly published a document with the correct date. That looked bad, but the clinic has now apologized for the mistake. But Zelensky's choice of clinic is already sparking controversy. The clinic is owned by a businessman critical of Poroshenko, and the doctor who did the test is apparently a bit part actor who has even done some work for Zelensky's comedy studio. One other interesting thing, Poroshenko had an opinion on the idea of Timoshenko refereeing the presidential debate. He said it was disrespectful to her and her voters. The debates are not a show, Poroshenko said. Sure they aren't, but everything leading up to them is. On a more serious note, let me speak from my heart in American English. I tell you what, this is bad, and it's a bit reminiscent of the 2016 U.S. presidential election, when coverage of the campaign went off the rails. With horse race, scandal, and entertainment aspects of the election largely eclipsing the candidates' records and their positions on issues. So if the Ukrainian presidential race further descends into political showmanship, hopefully the media will be focusing on policies, plans, and the issues. And, you know, maybe report the debate, not the circus leading up to it. Well, that's it for me. Keep your eyes posted on the Kyiv Post, both in print and online, and tune in next week for when Poroshenko and Zelensky challenge one another to a Yo Mama's So Fat joke contest. Peace and goodbye.